welcome to me coming back. <laughs> it's a lot of un unfortunate events happen and it made it so I can film. But we're back uh, with, I think it's A to C Stitch With Me number 45. I hope that is correct. Uh, we're in this series. From the Frosty Four series by Country College Needlework, here on camera, makes episode and put out every uh, once a week, unless something unexpected happened, like it has been, which ended up taking a little break. Um, so, but now I'm hopefully back. what it's going to look like. This is part number two in the Frosty Forest and this is how far we have got. This is part number one and that's fully finished. Um, I got everything that you see, the, the floss, the fabric, um, buttons, like everything you need to stitch it except needles and needle minders uh, from Patchwork Rabbit. It's a company in the UK and they have, you can have a monthly subscription to one of their patterns and then you can also decide if you want to get all of the floss, both fancy floss and uh, DMC. So that's what I use to get this. And more information you can find at the first episodes in this series. So welcome so much. This is just me stitching uh, and rambling on when I'm stitching. You guys apparently like that the best. <laughs> so we'll keep going with that. So today I was thinking of maybe um, stitching this there since it has been so long and I have been away that can be fun to do and then we'll take it from there what we will be stitching going forward so I am going to zoom you guys in as I always do if I remember because that's the way we like it All right, let's jump into this. Um, so first off, we are going to do a simple stitch with one color for the nose, it's um, DMC 3031. It's a dark brown color. You have to excuse me if I'm not totally into this yet. This is stitched on a pearl gray linen, 32 count. Belfast by Swigert and I'm stitching two over two. That means I am stitching with two strands of floss over two strands in the fabric. So if we start from this hole, you have one fabric thread and two fabric threads. And going up, you have one fabric thread and two fabric threads. So this uh, tic-tac board right here is one stitch. And that's usually how I'm thinking when I'm stitching uh, on even weaves is that I'm stitching on a tic-tac board.
I'm starting with the loop method. Uh, that means I put the two ends together, try to line them up as best as I can. Um, put the needle on and then at the other end there is a loop. So then I can go down, come up, like if I was doing a stitch, then I take my needle through the loop and go down. I saw the camera was suddenly not in focus. I don't know if that was from earlier that you saw the tic-tac board, but as you can see, like, this is the tic-tac board I'm talking about. You have one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, so it makes kind of a little tic-tac board right there. And there is actually just going to be one stitch and then I have to end the floss because it's a long way until the next time it's used. So then I change off my needle because this one is the ballpoint tip. Don't know if you can see that right there. There's a little ball at the end. So it's not really good for um, ending floss. So, but it's uh, a really nice needle to stitch with. So I do love stitching with it. That's why I don't bother having to change needles for when I'm switching to end my floss or start my floss if I'm starting with a pin stitch. Because that's that's what I'm what I usually use is uh, the pin stitch. To end and then it depends on how long my leftover floss is. Um, if I I'll do a loop again or pin stitching to start. And then we have this color right here. Going to go up again because the floss will not lay where I wanted it to lay, so trying again. Let's see if that got better, and I think it did. And now we're actually right here there is supposed to be some white so since I'm stitching this how I usually stitch I will go and find that one start stitching So there is supposed to be white here and then a strip down and there is some white over here so 
thinking about the best way of stitching that. And I think maybe the best thing will be to do the strip down with one leg and come up with the other leg and then jump over to do the random pieces here and there of the white collar. This is how I thread my needle. And of course, I don't get it when I'm trying to show you because then I'm looking at the camera and not what I'm doing. So this is how I have always started uh, to threaded my needle. Um, and I actually found another stitcher that does it the same way. So that was really exciting. Because I don't know many that do it the same way as me. So. So let's see. And have five stitches down. Then we will do five stitches up. So, yeah, it was really lucky that I managed to get to film today because it's uh, the 29th of December. My husband and son has been home and is going to be home. Since uh, both of them has been home since Christmas Eve. And then they are going to be home until after the new year. So so it has been difficult to find time to film. Plus, uh, if you follow my regular updates you know that my grandpa passed away and that was a really hard hit for me mentally so things have things have been tough around here so today I decided that I was going to film and right at the moment I was going to film I suddenly started feeling really sick. So I did in a way cancel my plans. I did sit down and make some spreadsheets and stuff instead. And then luckily I started feeling better and then I thought that yeah it's starting to be late but lately I haven't been sleeping well Ellie sleeping well anyway so why not just use the time to sit and stitch talk with friends and maybe if I'm lucky I will get get a good night's sleep I'm actually wondering if doing this one too. Just need to double count. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, 
I'm really glad I got the opportunity to film and stitch on this again because oh, this stitch is amazing and it always looks so good. The thing I'm doing now, if you have seen me do this, I come up in the, um, if you remember the tic-tac-toe I, I talked about, that one cross like goes over the tic-tac-toe board. It goes from uh, one corner to the diagonal one, from the next corner to the diagonal one. I go up in the bottom middle, or one of the middle parts at the sides and then I go straight down in the middle doing just a half of a pin stitch and that is just to get the floss to lay the way I want when I come back up again when I'm come back up again when I'm doing the next stitch my brain is really bad today so just apologizing you you get what you get <laughs> or else this would have taken even longer for me to get back and film so hopefully I'm not too scatterbrained and this will still be fun to watch and if I'm if it's to totally awful listen to me being scatterbrained then can always turn off the, off the volume and just sit and watch me stitch. There might be some people that already am doing that. I know I'm certainly the, do that sometimes when I'm watching other stitch with me. If I just want to have a little quiet time just watching people stitch it's it's really relaxing just watching the stitches being made then I will turn off the sound and just usually by then I'm in my bed and I'm just laying there watching people stitch There has now a little tail. And now I am considering there is just this one white stitch left right there where it's parked. It's parked in the middle of the stitch so it doesn't get in the way if, if I were to stitch the other color in the next row. So now I'm wondering if I am going to end the floss jump down to here where's the next stitch and I think the jump isn't that far away and everything here will be stitched plus it's the white floss I'm jumping with and it has a tendency to not show up to to not be as visible at the back which is nice I think I'm going to do the half stitch before I jump just to make sure the stitch will still lay nice before jumping to the next one. 
and there is no stitch going right here it's empty um, so that's why I'm just parking where I am going to do the next stitch instead of in the middle of the tic-tac-toe board middle bottom of the tic-tac-toe board uh, I have actually started using that method of parking in the middle even on my Ada then I will just pierce the fabric and I will park it at the in the middle at the bottom of the square and that makes it so much easier because then you never have the issue of having to move your floss because you have a floss parked where you are supposed to come up and stitch the next stitch so that's nice and he is starting to look really nice and I just realized I might have made a mistake here ending by doing just that one stitch because he is supposed to have a French knot and I haven't read the instruction what it says about French knots yet because I didn't think I would need it this so soon uh, most likely it's supposed to be one strand of floss anyways uh, but if I could get away with two strands I could have done the French knot before um, tying off the floss pin stitching it but oh well we will just go back and do that later And this time when filming, I have tried to put my phone in fly mode and hopefully it will save a little bit on my batteries because lately my phone battery has been really bad. So I'm afraid that I won't get many episodes when sitting down one evening to film because the phone will... be out of batteries. So. But we'll see. It might still be just fine. At least I will get to film one episode. And it's not the worst having to pick this project up two days in a row to film, so. But it is a shame if I have to end stop stitching when I really want to stitch on this because of the fact that I don't have more energy left on my phone. So Christmas is over. Christmas was really fun this year. My son was, uh, the first year, he really was excited about Santa. Um, so he was talking about Santa all the time and the fact that Santa 
did come and give him presents. And so that was, it was fun. Even though it was mommy making all the presents and Santa got all the credit. But it's fine. It's not like you will believe in Santa forever, so it's still good. Listen, Tom, with the body or the belly of the reindeer, then we just have the feet left or hoofs or legs, legs and hoofs is my is maybe a more correct way of calling it. I'm going to park that right there. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas. And enjoyed, or if you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a lovely holiday. And if you did celebrate something else, then I hope you had a good time celebrating what you were celebrating. It's still a nice time of the year, even though we don't celebrate Christmas. I think I'm going to do the pin stitch under the brown stitch here. Then I have to change. needle and there it was much easier at once to get under the stitches so what I'm doing now I'm just doing the pin stitch underneath the, the stitches basically so and the first time I Just a second, it stuck to my needle minder. And since it's a snowflake needle minder, it has a lot of points that it likes to hang on to. So I need to move it a little further away so my floss doesn't get caught again. So yeah, I'm just doing the pin stitch underneath the stitch that's already there. And it's just as secure as a normal pin stitch, which is nice because you kind of have to, with the pin stitch, do it a place that is either underneath a, underneath the stitch or 
where a stitch will be done. Because you don't want to have a pin stitch right here in the middle of nowhere, because then it will show. And that's no fun. So. I am thinking I am going to go down and come up for the leg. See why I did this part. So soon isn't much floss left and since I don't want to play floss chicken on camera even though I have made some methods to, <laughs> to be able to play floss chicken even on camera which is a little bit insane but if you have been following me for a while you know I am so no chalk it's not a big surprise. And if you're new, then welcome. I really hope you enjoyed this series. I know a lot of you do. And it's so fun to have this going. Like, I, and since it's pre recorded, usually if it's not too much that happens uh, I can usually get away with like something happening in my life and there still will be episodes up since I have a good chunk pre-recorded usually uh, but this time I didn't get the chance to record before my pre-recorded date was up and then when there wasn't more episodes left to do then everything else happened and I wasn't in a place where I could film so I'm really so sorry about that I know a lot of you have been missing this series but luckily if it gets put on hold again or on break it will always come back because I'm not done stitching this project and everyone has everyone that likes this series and comments usually tells me that they want to see the whole thing completed on camera so that's what I'm going to do So, as I said, I have been planning next year for 2020. I have met, made spreadsheets for both all the challenges I am thinking of participating in. I have made like, um, um, Uh, templates for uh, challenges like the monthly and weekly ones so I can just copy the template uh, when a new week starts or a new month and hopefully that way I will be able to I almost did a mistake there. Well, luckily I caught it in time. Uh, yeah, so I have made the templates so that I can easily uh, copy it. And I have made everything digital. And hopefully I will keep up with it. 
So I have made spreadsheets for all the challenges, as I said, and also all the tracking of stitching and other good stuff when it comes to my whips. So I am constantly finding new things I want to track. So one of the things that will be new next year that I'm doing is that I will track all the stitching I am doing on uh, one whip um, all the stitches I am doing throughout the whole year so that and I'm going to stitch um, like I, I am tracking the hours of stitching I have done on a whip that I have done all of this year I just haven't had a good spreadsheet to put it on and I have made, it, made a spreadsheet that will track uh, like all the hours and days I have stitched on a project all year plus the previous year. So I will get a total for 2020 and a total all over since I started tracking. Um, Day stitch, I started tracking in 2018. So I have a little bit more to go on there. I think I did it almost from the beginning of 2018, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and then... Uh, the hours I started, I think it was in se the end of September of 2018. So I have the hours for all of 2019. And then the stitches, I for like I have tracked all the stitches I have done in a year. I just haven't tracked them. All the stitches I have done in a year, I started in 2019 from the beginning. So those I have. Uh, but the stitches for each and every project, I haven't been tracking since the Crazy Headmistress Challenge started in a Magical School of Stitches at the 7th of July. So those have only been tracked since the 7th of July this year. But next year I will track it all year around. And what I am hoping to get from that is to see... To, to see what project is being neglected. Like I have... Some project I know is being neglected, and then I have other project that might get four or five days in a month, and that's all it gets throughout the year. But still, it's getting a massive amount of stitches because in those um, five days, I might have been stitching almost. Well, at the maximum, I was stitching, not the maximum, but if I stitch like a pretty high amount, I'm, I'm stitching eight hours in a day. That is like a high amount for me to stitch since I have other obligations. So eight times five is 40 hours. So that means one whip gets 40 hours of stitching in. And if I'm doing 100 stitches an hour, and I actually usually do more than that. But say 100 stitches an hour if it's like a really complicated project. That's 4,000 stitches. Like that's not nothing if it's a full coverage piece. Like it's half a page. It's, it's still a decent amount with 4,000 stitches. It's half a page. But if it's like a non-full coverage project... That gets you really far. 
Um, so, and then I have other projects that I have maybe done 10 days on, a little bit here and a little bit there. And it feels like it has been stitched and I have stitched it throughout the year a little bit here and a little bit there. So I feel like I have done a lot of stitching on it. But in reality, those days I might have been sharing that whip with something else I'm stitching. So maybe it only did get like an hour each time. And then if that happens like 10 days then suddenly you only have 10 hours and that's a thousand stitches. Like that's almost nothing. So, um, just having all the tracking, it's really nice. It's also nice to see, like with the, the project, like my Teresa Wensler, counting stitches again isn't a good way to track that project because there is so much fractional stitches and stuff like that that just, it takes time but still you get a lot done. Um, so, so that one is better to just track. Um, they stitch because you also don't want to track hours because it's a little bit more complicated. It takes a little bit more time. So yeah, so I'm doing all, <laughs> all the tracking I can think of next year. And I hope that really will be uh, nice. And we are getting, we are missing the last four stitches. For this whip, for this whip, no, there is more than four stitches left on this whip. Four stitches left on this dare. Oh my, I really need to drink some more energy. Drink. That's what I'm drinking to keep myself awake because it's uh it's starting to get pretty late and <laughs> like if you think I'm scattered brain beforehand, like add on having a really bad month and it being late <laughs> and you haven't slept well for the last Three weeks have been just horrible type of sleeping. That's uh, not a good combination, trying to stitch and speak. And not only just speak, because I can ramble on about nothing, but trying to speak and make sense. That's the difficult part. And keep on a topic in the conversation so you're not jumping around talking about five different things in three minutes. So yeah. But yeah, it will be exciting to see everything that is being tracked next year. I also have made a spreadsheet for tracking my stitches weekly on each project. I don't know if I will manage to keep up with that. That is the one I think is the most difficult to keep up with. Um, because I have so many other places I need to remember to update that that one is most likely the one going to be forgotten. I hope not, but most likely it will. Um, so, but on the bright side, if I do keep up with it a little bit, then I hope to maybe give you some statistic on, on this one, like I did when I finished my raccoon cabin. 
because it's nice to see like how much I have stitched. I at least feel that's fun. I don't know if you think that's fun or not, but that's that's like not half the fun, but maybe one fourth of the fun with stitching is keeping track of my stitching. <laughs> I know. You most likely think that's super weird, <laughs> but that's me. That's how I am. So do we want to see? I actually think I will wait with the French knot until the second dare is done. So I remember how many times I am wrapping the floss around the needle before doing the French knot. So it's all the cross stitching now on the dare is done. So that is a lot of fun. Um, I am thinking I want to start the second dare just to have, just for a reference point. I'm just dividing the one that I already used over here just so I can start with the loop method that is what I think it's best when I have to count for a while before stitching it's easier to just count to where you are starting because if I was doing two just two regular strands I would count, have to count additional to where the pin stitch is starting. So. I'm trying not to count loud because I know some of you are actually stitching while watching me. So <laughs> I try not to count out loud, but sometimes it happens and I'm sorry if I'm ruining your stitching and most likely now I'm going to count loud I'm warning you so if you're stitching and counting you should maybe stop I give you a little time and then I'm going to start counting because I need to count on this one so one two three here is where the stitch is supposed to start. I'm not done counting, just warning you again. Uh, because now I'm going to count. Uh, because there was supposed to be another stitch here. And now I'm going to count my way over to this stair. Just to see that it's correct and it's in the correct spot I'm ending up. So, so, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four no more to use the next. Okay. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and on number seven is the next stitch, and that was correct. And I know, I've jumped from Norwegian to English counting there. So, you got a little bit of training in Norwegian counting. My son currently is really good with counting. He has started to, to actually learn how the numbers look. So he can count to 10 and a little bit over 10, um, but he still sometimes uh, can um, mix up some of the numbers when you get over 10, but he, like if he really focuses and has a good day, then he can count to 20. 
without problems. So that's that's cool. He's four years old and he can count. And I guess that's what you get for having a mom and a dad being a math teacher. <laughs> So, no, he can't read yet, and he doesn't know of all the letters, but he actually has started to learn his own letters, and his name is Leo, and it's really funny, because on Christmas, he was the one picking uh, the present that was going to be gifted out, uh, because the way we do it is one person gets the presents, usually the smallest child or the smallest children. Uh, and currently that was my son. And then if they're big enough to read, they will read what it says. If not, they will give it to another person and they will say what it says on the uh, package who it is to and from and then they the young the the child picking the present is goes and gives it to the person that is supposed to receive the package then we wait until the pack that package is or gift is opened and then we will find the next present and so it goes. So my son, <laughs> he, uh, my mother-in-law, his grandma, was the one that had to read. And he, she said she noticed that he had learned his letters because he would try to pick only the presents that had his name on it. The thing was, he didn't always see the difference be between the name being at the top being to him or uh, the fact that the present were at the uh, bottom being from him. Like because when we write from our family, I usually will write just all of our names on there. So it gets more intimate with the gift that it's not just from, oh, this family or this family. It's actually from this person and this person and this person. I think that's a little bit more nice to do. So yeah, he, <laughs> he was hunting out the presents with his name on it. So that was really funny. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's my son for you. And the worst, worst part is, in all reality, he is too much like his mother. Like, I never have done that because my family didn't celebrate Christmas. Or like my mom and dad isn't celebrating Christmas. So I never celebrated Christmas as little. Um, so I didn't do the whole picking a present thing. But I know myself that if that was like I had the opportunity as little, I would definitely try and hunt out my presents first. <laughs> Uh, so okay that's what I had for you today it's a little bit longer and I think that's fine since we had a little break then it's nice to have a, a tiny bit longer episode than what usually not like by a whole lot but um, and I usually say this every time <laughs> because my plan was to originally only do 30 minutes each time of stitching 
So I always talk at the beginning and the end a little bit. So like when I'm getting to about 32, 33 minutes in total, that's when I'm supposed to stop stitching. <laughs> But that never happens. And now we're at 47 minutes. So, and we have stopped stitching, but that is far away from 32 to 33 minutes. But yeah, here's where we are at. We are getting really close uh, to seeing this one finished. Like, there's, don't get me wrong, there is still a good amount of episodes left. There is still a good amount of stitching left. I have like a second dare like this to do, the French knots. And you know, doing those on camera, that's not the easiest thing. Uh, so I might, uh, before filming that video, I might pre... Uh, fasten the floss at the back just so I don't have to flip it over because that's the worst part is flipping my work over when filming because I have to move everything out of the way like the the chair the tripod is hanging from I actually have to move my frame because the tri the the chair cannot be moved too far away so I have to and the frame is sitting really close to me so I have to kind of like move that and I have pillows I'm using for support to my arms so I don't get too tired and yeah everything has to be moved to flip it around fasten the floss flip it back again do whatever I'm doing and then put everything back in the right spot again. Like it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, but we'll see when that day happen. I might be crazy enough to do that because every time, I think I said it last time with the raccoon that I was going to do that and I didn't. <laughs> I did flip around and do all the back and forth. So yeah. Thank you all so much for listening to me rambling on to uh, for all the support I get on this series. It's a super fun series for me to stitch. Uh, filming floss tube always takes away from stitching time. So being able to stitch and do floss tube at the same time, that is a bonus. And I love this project and I love sharing sharing my progress with you and all of you that are following me on this A to C stitch with me it's so fun to hear what you have to say often you will tell me what you have been stitching on and that's it's just so much fun it really is so thank you all so much for watching <laughs> 